If a major tsunami were to occur off the Atlantic coast, cities from New England to New Jersey could be hardest hit by the incoming walls of speeding water. Imagine the Old North Church in Boston, its spire piercing the sky, or the storied Plymouth Rock witnessing the birth of a nation. Now envision the relentless force of a tsunami, swallowing these symbols of heritage in a torrent of water. The very essence of New England's identity would be lost beneath the waves. The tidal threat would not spare the vibrant state of New Jersey, where landmarks like the Statue of Liberty and the Atlantic City Boardwalk embody the spirit of the nation. Picture the statue standing tall in the harbor or the boardwalk alive with the laughter of visitors. Now let the imagination wander into the realms of disaster, a tsunami erasing these symbols, reducing them to mere memories. Some scientists now think such a terrible scenario could become a reality one day. Keep watching the video to get to know why and how they think this might happen. Is the East Coast in danger? The East Coast was put on the danger map during a presentation at the Seismological Society of America's annual meeting in 2013, and it has been there ever since. People on the West Coast are well aware of the earthquake risks linked to the famous San Andreas Fault, but not many are discussing the East Coast tsunami threat. It's like the overlooked issue in the room. We usually connect tsunamis with the Pacific, but the East Coast isn't safe either. The call for awareness about a potential disaster hitting the East Coast first came up in April 2012. This happened after a swarm of 15 earthquakes hit approximately 170 miles east of Boston. The biggest one measured 4.0 in magnitude, not as intense as the massive earthquakes Japan often faces, but significant nonetheless. The same year, several other tremors occurred off the coasts of Newfoundland and Cape Cod along the Atlantic Continental Shelf. The Atlantic Fury over centuries The Atlantic Ocean may not experience as many tsunamis as the Pacific due to fewer volcanic explosions and tectonic plate movements. However, there have been notable instances of powerful tsunamis in the Atlantic, such as the 1755 disaster in Lisbon and the 1929 waves that hit Grand Banks, Newfoundland. Let me tell you about these, as they are some of the most chilling pages of history. The year 1755 marked a fateful moment for Lisbon, Portugal. The earth beneath the city trembled, releasing a seismic force that resonated with power between 8.5 and 9.0 on the magnitude scale. Buildings crumbled, and the very ground seemed to rebel against the structures that once stood proudly. As the initial shockwaves subsided, a sinister aftermath unfolded. Fires ignited, spreading like malevolent spirits through the debris-strewn streets. Amid the chaos, a monstrous tsunami rose from the depths of the Atlantic, mercilessly assaulting the already battered city. Waves fueled by the earthquake's energy inundated coastal areas, sweeping away remnants of human civilization and leaving behind a scene of utter desolation. Imagine the once thriving streets of Lisbon transformed into a ghost town. The remnants of centuries-old architecture submerged beneath the relentless force of the tsunami. Historians estimated that of Lisbon's population at the time of approximately 200,000 people, 30,000 to 40,000 were killed. As you can understand, the Lisbon earthquake has proven the unpredictable fury that the Atlantic Ocean can unleash upon unexpected coastal cities. Fast forward to 1929 and the North Atlantic witnessed another chapter of devastation. Off the coast of Newfoundland, a seismic disturbance triggered a colossal tsunami that surged towards the Grand Banks. The waves, towering like titans, crashed upon the unsuspecting shores with a force that echoed through time. Picture the fishing communities along the Grand Banks, their residents unaware of the impending doom. The waves, fueled by the massive undersea landslide, reached staggering heights, dwarfing everything in their path. Ships were tossed like playthings, and coastal settlements were swallowed by the monstrous waves. The event caused surreal scenes like these. By recounting these historical horrors, we not only honor the memory of those affected, but also underscore the urgent need for awareness and preparedness along the vulnerable Atlantic coasts. Mega Tsunami Trigger in the Canary Islands Scientists are concerned that the Upper East Coast is at risk due to recent seismic activity in the Atlantic 
that mirrors the conditions before the devastating 7.2 magnitude Grand Banks quake. This quake caused a massive undersea landslide that resulted in towering waves hitting Newfoundland, destroying homes and claiming 29 lives. A 10-meter tsunami wave also hit southern Newfoundland, leaving thousands homeless. Scientists are warning that a similar earthquake-triggered tsunami could potentially impact the northeast coast of the U.S., pointing to similarities in tectonic settings between U.S. offshore earthquakes and the major Canadian earthquake in 1929. Some have suggested that there is even a remote possibility that the Atlantic coast will be struck by a tsunami in somehow an indirect manner. It all started in 1999 with the studies of a geologist named Simon Day. He found out that the western side of the Combre Veja volcano on the island of La Palma, Canary Islands, seemed to be getting unstable and starting to collapse. Several papers after that said that with each future eruption, this side would become more unstable until, at some point in the future, a big eruption could make the entire chunk crash into the ocean. How big is this chunk? A paper in 2005 estimated it could be between 150 and 500 cubic kilometers of rock, which is a lot. In the worst case scenario of 500 cubic kilometers, it would hit the ocean creating a water dome 900 meters tall, taller than the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. After that, the dome would turn into a wave about 600 meters high, rushing west at speeds up to 720 kilometers an hour, like a jet aircraft. Huge tsunamis would hit the western shores of the Canary Islands, and smaller 50 to 100 meter waves would impact the African west coast. Meanwhile, a solid wave 500 kilometers across would move west across the Atlantic towards America. Since the Canary Islands took most of the tsunami's force, Spain and England would face smaller waves between 5 and 7 meters. After about 9 hours, the first part of the wave would hit the Americas. While it would lose size over the journey, 10-meter waves would hit the coast of Newfoundland in Canada. Larger 15 to 20-meter waves would impact the northern coast of South America from Brazil to Venezuela. Unfortunately, Florida would bear the brunt of the tsunami's power, with 20 to 25-meter waves crashing across the east coast and causing severe damage to cities like Miami and Jacksonville. These waves would be about the same size as the waves during the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami in Indonesia. Similar waves between 10 to 25 meters would crash across the rest of the U.S. east coast, potentially damaging cities like Charleston, New York, and Boston. While this might sound frightening, it's crucial to approach this with caution. This is a worst-case scenario based on scientific paper that has received some criticism from other scientists for sounding too alarming. Mega tsunamis from volcanic collapses like this seem to happen over geological timescales, and evidence suggests it has occurred dozens of times in the Atlantic alone over the past million years. New Jersey's Meteo Tsunami It actually happened that in June of 2023, the Northeast was hit by a big storm. At first, this wasn't considered a huge deal according to the National Weather Service. It was classified as a low-end storm, but what happened afterward was kind of strange. It caused six-foot waves in more than 30 tidal gauges along the East Coast, making it seem like a tsunami. But it turns out it wasn't exactly a tsunami, according to Paul Whitmore, who works at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration Center for Tsunami Research. It was more like a meteor tsunami. This means it wasn't caused by earthquakes, but by the weather itself. The storm in the northeast might have messed with the air pressure just enough to create waves that act like tsunamis. They're still figuring out exactly why it happened. Some experts think it could be because of the strong storm, while others suggest it might have something to do with the continental shelf east of New Jersey shifting. Even though it looked a lot like a tsunami, the way the water moved in Rhode Island didn't match what happens in a regular storm surge it's still a bit of a mystery. Despite the potential risk, it appears that the only town in New Jersey with a tsunami plan in place is Manasquan. They've even gone so far as to publish an evacuation plan for potential floods. However, there seems to be some issues with their alerting system. In August 2020, when severe weather was expected in Manasquan, a warning siren malfunctioned one morning, falsely triggering a tsunami alert. Imagine the fear and confusion for the people and residents they must have been quite scared. Before moving on, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and please make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our daily videos.
Tsunami Monitoring Systems Speaking of tsunami monitoring systems, are you curious to know how they actually work? The first attempts at tsunami warnings were in the 1920s when Hawaii took the helm. Of course, our monitoring systems are much better today than in the 1920s, so we'd have a real-time warning of any incoming tsunamis. Modern systems triggered by seismic activity provide precious minutes to forecast potential tsunamis and issue warnings to threatened areas. Thanks to seismic wave speed, earthquakes can be detected almost instantly, giving ample time for forecasts and targeted warnings. Regional centers harness seismic data, issuing public alerts in less than 15 minutes for local threats. Japan, a tsunami-savvy nation, boasts a network warning system that leaps into action within minutes of an earthquake. In the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, the warning hit within three minutes, proving that preparation can be a lifesaver. However, keep in mind that it's not just about detection, it's about communication. Tsunami warning systems are armed with multiple communication channels, from texts and emails to sirens and radio broadcasts. The more lines, the safer the shorelines. Riding the tsunami warning waves isn't always smooth sailing. While technology races ahead, false alarms can still make waves. Local systems, though quick, might not discern subtle underwater shifts, leading to occasional false alerts. A small price for a quick response. In the blink of an eye, a tsunami can strike, leaving little time for warnings. The 1993 Hokkaido tsunami is a haunting example, hitting just minutes after the quake. But its big but effective warning systems can still save lives given a little distance from the epicenter. The story of tsunami warnings is etched in the annals of resilience. From the devastating tsunamis in 1946 and 1960 that shook Hawaii into action to Japan's swift response in 2011, each chapter teaches us to ride the waves of innovation. That's all for this video. What would you like us to cover next? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below and stay tuned for our next videos. We'll see you soon on the channel.